in the middle time, the hour will reach seven o'clock. For you have the king, Grant Murdoch, the Caribbean voice of the air will sing a good song, Norman Wilder at the piano. Any. Yes, sir. Get out. Yes, sir. You 
you lost your head. You've fallen for this sooner. He's not a crooner. Except the swellest voice ever heard on the radio. Anyway, it's the first time I ever fell for anyone, except Lexi. And Joe, the harder I fall, the better I will. You've had a month already. And you haven't gotten rid of my last manager. That's all that interests me. Well, you had more than a month. And you told me to get off a while at 50 grand. Then a hundred grand to fit out of the fifty. And what happened? Why did just laugh at all? That's why I put you in. I told you the beer racket is out. This is a new racket. If you give me more time, listen, Joe. You listen. There isn't any more time to wait. At the end of this week, Wilder will be signing new radio contracts for Grant Murdoch. I got contracts all drawn up. I got a new manager to pick Wilder's place. I even got a new piano player. Half a million a year to be split up. And you falling down. Joe, you've got to listen. That question mark of a manager's got a hold on them. He's got to hypnotize. Well, I'm not imagining things. Why, you even got the run of these two apartments. And Grant straight back into the sea. He's scared of Wilder. He won't be scared of Wilder after tonight. But you're out. Your cut goes to an old friend of yours. He's in there, waiting. What do you mean? No, not like him was. Oh, Jim, you can't do that. Not to that wrong hit man. You kill him. I tell him they can't do it. It's no way to kill him. I'm not killing the goose with a golden voice. Lefty will do your job. He'll get rid of Murdoch's manager. He said, take it to you, Jim. To me. I can't help it if he gets bumped off accidentally in a game fight, can I? Anyway, you're out of it. I'm glad I'm out of it. But I'll get a bigger thing. I tell you, I'm going to marry Jack Murdoch. <laughs> get down to the radio building. You can pick him up there. Step on it.
in a new song tomorrow afternoon. I'll put you in it tonight and tomorrow morning. Say, hey, I've got to have some time to myself. We put in a new song last week. I 
I understand. You don't want to make sacrifices and let your voice justify it. I don't want others to make sacrifices. Tell me, how long have you studied for? Since I was 16. Even before that. But I don't want to continue unless I can reach the top. Well, it isn't an easy matter to reach the top. But it is simply to test your point. Now, I have an appointment with Mr. Murdoch this evening, but if you'll tell me where I can get in touch with you. You do a very kind, Mr. Riley. No, not at all. I'm, I'm very, very interested. You have an unusual quality in your speaking voice. I think we could make the test tomorrow morning. I hope you can. Tomorrow I have to decide which way I'm going. I've reached a crossroad. Crossroad. Each day, hundreds of letters come to Mr. Murdoch. These are blood letters. Mass letters. The textually answers those. These I answer. They are from people whom as you express it, reach the crossroad. Some of them have even taken the wrong turn. This broadcast has made them pause. This is from a man in prison. Mm -hmm. Well, all of us in a crime, so perhaps all of us are criminals. That man has the same emotions as you or I. This is from a woman who is dying. She asks for a particular town. It will come tomorrow afternoon. There are not more than eight or ten of these a day. But each one contains a half new phrase that every musician should strive for. Each says in his own language, as though you were singing directly to me. It would be wonderful to have such a voice. The voice is merely an instrument. To reach people who must have sympathy. The realization that every person in the world is a human being. Whether it's a king on his throne, or a cripple on the street corner. Yes. Yeah. We're all of us very, very alive. I shall always remember what you said. Goodbye. It's awesome, Mr. Goodbye. Hey, boss. You got any business with a guy named Lefty Morris? Mr. Morris, Sandy, who is he? He's Joe Maestro's rod man. Rod man? Yes, boss. Gun. He's downstairs waiting for you. Well, why didn't you bring him up? Bring him up? My boss, he bumps people off. Croaks them. Kills them for Joe Maestro. Oh, you have fantastic ideas, Sandy. Here, gather up the letters, will you? I have an appointment this evening. No fooling, boss. Killing his Lefty Morris' business is just the same as music as yours. It's very interesting. I'd like to talk to him. I tell you, boss, he don't talk. Ike Bergen did the talking when he offered a hundred grand to buy you off. He's Joe Maestro's mouthpiece lawyer. You just laughed at him, but I told you then they wouldn't stop at nothing. <laughs> this is very amusing, Sandy. He wanted to manage Mr. Murdoch. It's a racket, boss. You handle the jack for Murdoch, don't you? Yeah. Money. Joe. Listen, boss, if I could play it on the piano, or you could understand the English language. Oh, <laughs> yes, Sandy, I'll do it. Get this. Lefty Morris and two lookouts are downstairs waiting to take you for a ride. Right. Yeah, I know. You got your own car, but it ain't that kind of a ride. They want to put you out of the way, bump you off. They want to kill you. But why? Oh, boss, but with you out of the way, they can make a place for the jack that Murdoch draws down. Could they? With me out of the way? Oh, Sandy, you've no idea how laughable that is. Oh, boss, it's nothing to laugh at. Well, I'm glad you're here. That woman that uh, Murdoch's running around with, she's in it too. She used to be Lefty Morris's mom, and she's still with the gang. Oh, boss, just this one. Do what I tell you, will you, please? Baby, you ain't had a horse on me yet. That only proves that horses are safe, and I said that horses not. <laughs> Mr. 
right through, boss. Big turn his back on it. He's a power man. You know, why we wanted me to rehearse this song tonight. Hey, what did you tell him? Told him I wouldn't. You know, you were right for what you said yesterday. I've got to put him in his place and keep him there. How did I say that? Really like to think that. Anyway, I'm sorry for him. But you might be better with a man who could miss the seat. And for piano players, he can buy them like bananas in the bank to have a car with him. Oh, hello. Yes. Hey, yes. Some man wants to talk to you. Mm-hmm. Hello. The hunchback has been bumped off. Accidental in a gang fight. The bulls will have to come to the corner's apartment. What man's calling you at my apartment? The manager of the apartment house where I live. I should have moved my finger to get it off me. My apartment's been wrong. But let's forget about it. Let's go out and make a round of the house and forget about everything. Not a bad idea. The hunchback lab will come here and insist on a rehearsal. I'll get that key away from him first thing tomorrow. I was just talking about that hunchback. You're right. I hate him too. I don't hate him. I don't hate anybody. I'm in love with you. Oh, damn. For the first time in my life, I'm really in love all the way through. Yeah. And I don't get anything. You will go out and forget about everybody except that. All right, darling. Oh, you're right. Well, I told him I'd rehearse that song at the studio tomorrow morning. They're rehearsing it tonight. Well, I'm going out. I'd love to meet you. Come on, Grant. So that I punch that thing and get it off. Aside from the necessity of rehearsing, it might be as well if you chose your company a little more carefully. Are you trying to tell me who I can go with? Merely cautioning you. I don't want to take the time to create another celebrity. <laughs> Incidentally, the car I was supposed to be riding in tonight was riddled with bullets. <laughs> 
Say, somebody must have thought I was in the car. No. But apparently some of your friends have planned to share in the profits of your vault. The most of you in fact. Why are you staring at me like that? He's crazy. Don't listen to him, Jack. He's trying to come to me. Come on. His mind is twisted at his body. I'll be at the studio first thing in the morning. Someone will have to make sacrifices. 
You mean that if Laura's voice is properly trained, she'll become famous? Yes. But no great singer can serve two masters. You can't mean it. But Bob and I, but you don't know how much we love each other. She's going on with her music. Well, that is easy to decide. If you come back at noon, Miss Hamilton, tomorrow, I shall know that you've decided on a career. Then we can plan your future. There's nothing to cry about. You're going to be the world's greatest singer. But Bob... Oh, I'm... now, come on, stop it. Or you'll have me crying in a minute. Come on, we'll talk this thing out ourselves, huh? Oh. You forgive and forgive. I can go on without you. Life is a sad affair. How can I? Oh, I forgot to ask at the studio how many families I got yesterday. 
About 850. Hmm, biggest mail I got this month. I congratulate you. Thanks. I'll see you at the broadcast mm -hmm. station. Oh, Charlie, it's my fault. The mirror's open. May I have a fix for you? Oh, thanks. You must be seven. Are you the people my manager expected to have known? Yes. Yeah. I should like to hear you sing. I'm afraid I couldn't sing for you, Mr. Murdoch. I should be frightened. No, no, no. Yes. Yeah. What is your initial, Ellen Stanford? Laura Hamilton. What a pretty name. I have this nerve fix. A new one put in. You're not so sure. I'm not sure. Perhaps I am. Well, I'm not. Let me keep this valid occasion. Prove it'll bring me luck. Just such things as fire me in my work. Entertainment, I'll sing for you at the Japanese broadcast. Any song you like. I like all your songs, Mr. Miller. But for a special reason. You see, I've just told someone goodbye. Oh. Well, then you'd like me to say goodbye. Yes, goodbye. It's the loveliest of all this time. Oh, thank you. And, uh, I'd like to have your phone number. And, uh, perhaps I might be instrumental in, uh, getting you an audition or something. Thank you. Chelsea, 11808. Dr. Brooks is saving us in now. Well, I'll bring you back to the dock after you say goodbye to the family. Bob, they want me to come to the boat. The boat's out of position. But when he comes back in six months... But I said I wasn't even going to think of such things. Just movies. This cruise meant a great deal to you, didn't you? We planned on it as a honeymoon. And I'm to blame for spoiling your plans? No. Both of us think that you're doing a marvelous thing for me. Bob says the tendency is leaving me entirely in your charge. Then let me make a suggestion. We invariably give you all of our teaching and our dreams in the language which we know and like the best. So should it be with you. One should actually think and dream and music. To the musician, the world should be an orchestra. Sometimes playing harmoniously, sometimes discordantly. Just now, I looked out of the window. You were saying goodbye to Dr. Brooks. Although in the minor key, that was harmonious. Then I wondered what was the name. I went and looked out into the hall. We were talking to Mr. Murdoch. That was discordant. I was crying. So Mr. Murdoch kindly said he'd sing for me this afternoon. Any song I could select. This song would be selected. Goodbye. Mr. Murdoch sometimes has promises which he cannot fulfill. He promises to sing to many women. He's Mr. Wilder. He has the best of singing in his voice. I can't believe he's done it. Sometime we'll talk more about him. At the moment, it's enough to say that the afternoon's program is already made up. The Murdoch will not be able to see you as far as he promised. Now, now, come. 
for he was through with all women. That's what you said last night. That's what you promised again this morning. So where'd you find that? Where did you go? In your pocket. What's in your pocket? Well, put it down and get out. So you think you could move me in before breakfast to throw me out before dinner? Well, I'm not sitting out. Not for any woman. So what are you going to do about it? What am I going to do about it? It's just this. Grant! Grant! You said you were going to be married. I love you. I'm not going to let you do this to you. Mary? Say, hey, get out. Get out quick. I got a kid. Well, are you going to get out? No. Hello, police department. This is Norman Wilder speaking. Manager and accompanist of Grant Murdoch. There he is, Miller. Grant Murdoch is being shot. There, the citizen apartment. 
as you get up to the heart. I killed him. You must have come back for this. Come back? But I've never been here before. If Murdoch said if I come as far as he came for me, is he here? You mean to say you've never been here before? No. Then how did this get here? Well, Miss Murdoch is going to try a fix for me. I broke the mirror this morning. Got it outside your studio. Oh. Oh, yeah. My dear, you must take it and go away at once. Mr. Murdoch is in jail. You must never tell anyone you came to his apartment. But why? I never came to it. What's happened here? Mr. Murdoch's been shot. He's dead. Mr. Murdoch is dead? I don't know now who killed him. You must leave at once. I telephoned the police that I killed him. You telephoned the police that you? I came here again. I bought a pistol I came here and I found this. Murdoch was in there dead. The death and fell down at the case, lying on the floor beside him. You thought I'd be here. You did think I had... So that's why you told the police you did it. Go on. Put the lesson signs in here. Maybe you can clear yourself. You can tell him someone else tell him the police. Please go quickly. You must be seen with me. You'll leave as soon as that's wrong? Yes. I'll be glad to talk You'll get from me.
I'm telling you, Lieutenant, I'd have croaked Murdoch myself for hitting that hunch back. Say, he's a swell guy. I'd take the rap for him. Stick to the facts. Well, that's all there is, then. I ain't seen either Murdoch or Mr. Wilder since they left the broadcasting station. All right. You can go. Thanks. Stay out of trail. It may lead you to Wilder. Okay, then. I'm all ready with the substitute number for the Murdoch broadcast. Fine. Gee, it gives me the willies waiting for 7 o'clock. But oh, appreciate it, it? I guess it gives us all that. Who's in Murdoch's room? Nobody. All the doors are locked. Glenn. The signal has just come from Murdoch's room. Yeah, hey, that's funny. You better stall until I investigate. Yeah, sure. What's the matter now, Horton? The usual signal has just come from Murdoch's room. The lovely signal. I'm investigating. The only instructions are to keep out of Murdoch's room. I'll investigate. Down the time for Murdoch at 7 o'clock and be ready to cut in with that mic. What? Murdoch? Yeah. Be ready to cut in with that microphone at the usual time. That's why the baby would be a in the head of him. He said I'd hear from him later. The hour is 7 o'clock. We're tolling the chimes for Grant Murdoch. That's great, Murdoch, you did hear Oh, Murdoch. Norman Wilder must be free. That's great, Murdoch's voice. He's dead. I saw him with my own eyes, dead. Stop. I'm fine. Come on, honey. We'll go to the broadcast station. We'll find out what it's all about. He's dead. I see. That's his voice. Say, what is this? Are you trying to pull a fast one? Either way, she's double crossed Now she's turned yellow. She's liable to squeal. Oh, I know why you're following her, But I'm entitled to a break. Anyway, so I can find out whether he's still alive. Sure, kid. I'll wait that long. I got a heart. Murdoch singing. Ah, you're crazy, Mac. That guy's been cold for an hour. Go to the radio building. Connection with the Murdoch murder. Investigate the broadcast now on the air. Shadows are creeping and darkness is near. This is the end of it all. Soon we'll be parted. Forever, my dear, promise you'll come by before the little old 
I was wrong. Love and music are not too long. I know that now. And so to him, my dear. Still hear his voice. To me, he's like a song that's been sung, yet it lives forever in your heart. Can't get that hunch back under my mind. Wonder who you thought he was taking you out to. Maybe for that thing that kicked him after you were dead. Uh, anyway, you took the rap for me. 